him to understand that if he has a bad game, that's all it is. So uh, he said he started playing better after Dame Jr. was born three years ago. The league better watch out if he's going to play three times as well. Just saying. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> jump, everyone. Bum, bum, bum. I'm Rachel Nichols. I'm joined by our esteemed panel today. First, we have the host of the Hoop Collective podcast, New York Times bestseller, Brian Windhorst. We also have eight-time All-Star and the only person to ever play 22 seasons in the NBA, future Hall of Famer, Vince Carter. Welcome, gentlemen. Coming up, guys, we're going to talk a little bit about Steph Curry. He passed Reggie Miller for second on the all-time threes made list this past weekend. When will Steph pass Ray Allen? Stick around for that first, though. Winning streaks are a funny thing. Sometimes they can bring a team together. Remember back in 2010 when LeBron first got to Miami and the start of the season was kind of a mess with the big three struggling to fit and Eric Spolster facing daily questions about whether he'd be fired? The team held the players-only meeting, reeled off a 12-game win streak, and became the powerhouse that would go on to win two titles in four years. But winning streaks can also end up meaning not much. Last year's Bucks won 18 straight, only to get thumped in the second round of the playoffs. Back in 08, the Rockets won 22 in a row, then lost in the first round. So how should we look at the Clippers and Jazz right now? L.A. is on a seven-game win streak, a run fueled by Paul George playing some of the best basketball of his career, and by Kawhi Leonard, who has not only shown up for the Clippers, but is doing it consistently. This current Clippers streak in includes Kawhi's first back-to-back -back games in nearly four years. Kawhi has also done what big stars are supposed to do, like yesterday, when much of the team appeared and hadn't quite woken up yet for the early Sunday afternoon tip. Leonard took things into his own enormous hands, outscoring the entire Thunder starting lineup in the first quarter and finishing with 34, 9, and 8. To me, everything the Clippers do this regular season is important, since last year we saw what happened when the team tried to skip steps. This time, they're giving themselves a much stronger foundation, but will the result be any different? Yeah, we don't know yet. As for the Jazz, well, they're on an eight-game winning streak right now, one of the league's top five, both offensively and defensively. Nearly all their wins so far this season have come by double digits. And Donovan Mitchell has clearly hit the gas pedal during this streak, putting up 27 a game. So what does Utah's streak mean? According to Steve Kerr, a lot. This weekend, the Warriors coach said of Utah, quote, they are trying to win a championship right now, and I think they are capable of doing so. You know, they are where we were three or four years ago, which is, well, quite the comparison. Three or four years ago, Golden State had Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, and Draymond Green all playing at the height of their powers on a team that was itself drawing comparisons to the 98 Bulls. I'm not sure that I think Utah's winning streak already puts them in that category. And it's important to remember that just last season, the Jazz had a 10-game win streak and still lost in the first round. Still, both the Jazz and the Clippers runs, they sure feel like something significant, and neither is over yet. So Vince, let's start with you. Who do you feel is the second best team in the West right now, giving some deference to the defending champion Lakers? Do you feel the Clippers slot in as their biggest rival in the West, or the Jazz, given what you've seen this past week or two? Uh, I mean, the Jazz are playing great basketball, and uh, they're, like you said, like you said, they're on a mission. But I still think the Clippers are, are are hungry, and they're also on a mission. They're trying to get to that Western Conference Finals again because they felt like, oh, not again, but to get where they should have been last year because they felt like they let opportunity slip away. So I think they're hungry, and they're playing great basketball as well. So I still give the edge to the Clippers, even though. You asked me this in maybe two weeks. It, it could be the Utah Jazz if they continue to play like they're playing. Yeah, I think the, the, the Clippers have a higher ceiling because they have guys on their roster who have, Kawhi, who's been a finals MVP a couple of times. But the one thing about these two teams that you have to pay attention to, it's 2021, three-point shooting. The Clippers are number one in the league in three-point shooting yeah. percentage. The Jazz are number two. The Jazz are number one in overall three-pointers made per game. That's what Steve Kerr is talking about, Rachel. He's talking about it reminds him of a team that plays good defensively and also overwhelms the opponent with high-volume three-point shooting. Now, the Clippers' defense at the start of this win streak was ranked in the bottom five in the league. They've played better, and now they've crawled into the top 15. 
So the Jazz are playing more consistently on defense, and that's something that matters. Look, mid-February, I think it's February 12th and 13th, somewhere around Valentine's Day, the Jazz go to L.A. and play a little two-pack of games against the Clippers and Lakers. Hmm. That will be a good referendum, something to look forward to. Very, very right. interesting. Look, they're fun, fun teams to watch right now, and it's pretty fun watching Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert and Jordan Clarkson and everybody on that squad. Really, you can see them learning what they are right now, and that's really fun as well, to watch a team figuring out just how much firepower it has. Now, guys, I want to move on to the eastern side of the bracket here. Let's move on to Jalen Brown, who had a historic performance last night. He dropped 33 points in just 19 minutes. And according to Elias Sports, that's the most point by any player in fewer than 20 minutes in the shot clock area era. That dates, guys, back to 1955. When you have done something no one has done since 1955, it is a big <laughs> deal. That's crazy. And it gets the attention You're of right. 11-time champ Bill Russell, who tweeted at Jalen, great playing tonight, keep it up. So, Brian, is Jalen Brown on your most improved player ballot already? He's on my most improved player ballot. He's on the all-star ballot. He's on the all-NBA ballot. i got to be honest with you. There's only three or four players in this league right now I would probably trade Jalen Brown for. Um, and the contract that he signed, while it is a $100 million contract, is well less than the max making the Celtics thrilled that they got him on that deal. He's arguably one of the most valued dollar-for-dollar -dollar players in the league right now. And if you watch the way he got the points in this game, he showed everything. He created turnovers and scored in transition. He took the ball to the basket. He uh, you know, came off of screens uh, on catch and shoots and shot it. He did pull-ups. It was a complete display of how well-rounded his game was going to be. A couple of years ago, when he was in his second year, I kind of thought he was going to be a sort of a 3 and D player. Card knows defender who would score when the ball came to him. He wasn't getting the ball much. Now you look at him and say he's a foundational piece of a championship contender. I agree. I, I definitely think he's tops for, for most improved. And you can see at the end of last year, the way he was playing and the confidence that he was playing with, let, that lets you know going through the summer and well, whenever, I guess it wasn't the summer, but going into <laughs> next year, he was going to play with a lot of confidence and he hit the season, he hit the ground running from the beginning of the season. So, I, I, I mean, I think they're 1A and 1B when you're talking about the best players and most important players on the Celtics team. And when he goes and, and when Tatum goes, their team goes, uh, and then you add Kimba Walker. So I, I think right now, most improved, like you said, an all-star, uh, he's playing right at all-star level that he's playing at right now. And look out for Jalen Brown because the Celtics have a, a great opportunity to come out of the East because they play on both ends extremely hard. Vince, what did you notice about playing against Jalen Brown when you went against him over the past few years? He could do everything. Uh, you know, very athletic. He's he's a he's a guy at at six seven, six eight, six nine in that area who who can who can guard one through four. And, and he's very confident in his game, and you can see his jump shooting and his, you know, his three-point shooting and, and his confidence putting the ball on the floor just start to soar uh, in every year. And now watching him from afar, thinking back to where, seeing him his rookie year, uh, like Brian said, you, you just you didn't know at first, and you're like, oh, yeah, he's, he's a pretty good player. And now he's becoming a special player, and, and he will be getting a max soon. See, this is one of the awesome things about having Vince Carter in the show, like number 207. He's his own basketball reference. He has been able to play against and judge <laughs> yeah, every good. player in the <laughs> NBA over everybody. the last two decades and can give you their progression right off the bat. So, Vince, we appreciate that. <laughs> We're going to have a lot more of Vince Carter coming up, as well as me and Brian. He's going to give us his top three dunkers in the game today in this next segment. You are going to want to stick around for that. First, though, here's a distant replay. This date in 2020, when LeBron passed Kobe on the all-time scoring Indeed. list. The jump was in Philadelphia for this game, and it was a moment. The third leading score in NBA history, passing Kobe Bryant. I'm not even going to talk about what happened the next day. I'm going to savor this. All that's left ahead of him is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Carl Malone. <laughs> Everybody in the building giving LeBron James a standing ovation. Is playing the point guard can score at any level, um, maybe not the high flyer, but triple doubles. You expect a triple double from him every night, so that will be my comparison. I like but once that. again, let's go, Bucks. Eighteen long years. Talk to a Browns fan. Eighteen <laughs> long years. That was only like a part of your career. 
You played like a whole other presidential administration after 18 long years. There's no comparison to Mahomes because we don't have any young players who have won titles. <laughs> That's so good. Damn it, son of a gun, Ric Flair! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Miz Dogs, Bugs Hogs, DeAndre Hunter trying to throw one down on Giannis, but he had different plans. Um, Brian, I know you like to reward defense, but maybe it's a bad idea to try to meet Giannis at the rim. Just in general, don't try to go over Giannis. Around, under, right. you know, behind, not not over. You're going to lose going over. Right. And thank you for showing someone blocking a shot. That's thank my you. point. You to like the these. As you well. like these. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I got an opportunity. I was watching this game and, uh, you know, just seeing, knowing DeAndre Hunter, I, to see him actually try this and show. You know, no fear is you, you give him that support. I mean, the defensive player of the year. If you're going to make your mark as a dunker or as an athlete, why, who better than Giannis? Got to try. To try. <laughs> make acting well, Lakers Bulls. Montrose Harrell <laughs> getting fouled. Alex Caruso helps him up and gets left hanging in the process. But he played it off since. You got to like that. <laughs> that, that's one of those things that happens. That's just basketball, you know, especially when you get knocked down or whatnot, you, you, you tend to lose focus. And, you know, as a guy, you kind of just got to brush that off. <laughs> you just got to brush it off. I just like two all things, the handshake fails. Two things I take away from this. This was very strange. This was very strange. And also, look how long Montrez Harrell's arms are. I just sort of realized that. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Miss Jersey Swaps. Nets Heat, after the game, Kyrie asked for Bam's jersey. And our friend David Holcomb in Miami doing his job with the league charged him with, Brian, stepping in, stopping it from happening. Remember, the NBA has said limiting post-game daps, hugs, and asked security to be there to do this. What do you think, Brian? All right, two things we've learned today is that unless you're Vince Carter in the year 2000, you're going against Frederick Weiss, don't try to go over a player, and don't <laughs> mess with David Holcomb. You're never going to win that. Nope. You're never no, going to win. No, don't mess with Dave. Nope. No. Legend. Uh, I know Dave very well, and he's he's serious. He, and, yeah, he's legend, exactly, and he's a great guy, <laughs> but hey, he's doing his job. He's, he's protecting everybody. <laughs> Make skills. Celtics Cavs, JaVale McGee getting the rebound, goes behind the back on the break, dunks it down for the little coast to coast. Mm. Point JaVale. Gotta love it, Vince. Point center. Yeah, <laughs> you mean point center. I, I, the I thing remember, is the Cavs you remember have Shaq all doing these centers that. It was and a no different. guards. He's gotta do it. <laughs> right. Exactly. You remember Shaq did that as well, and everybody cleared out. I mean, they didn't quite clear out, but it's, it's, it's fun every now and then to see a center <laughs> run the point position and then finish it on his own without a pass. I love it. <laughs> a little tougher for Cleveland against the team playing defense. Time to write <laughs> it back, guys. Vince Carter's top three current, current pound-for-pound dunkers in the league. Number three, you picked Aaron Gordon of the Magic, Vince. You think he got robbed last uh, season in the dunk contest? I did. Uh, I, I mean, he should have. A, he should have a trophy, and that's why he's three instead of two uh, to me because of that. I, I know him very well. We've had a lot of conversations about dunking, about doing the dunk contest, what to do. So uh, he, he deserves one. All right. For speaking sure. of dunk contest, airplane mode, Derek Jones Jr. Now of the Trailblazers. <laughs> And it, it, hey, he he's he's earned airplane mode for a reason. This guy <laughs> can fly. He's fearless. He's not afraid to jump or dunk over anybody. Uh, I think soon at some point you'll see him. Look at that right there. Oh my goodness! Woo. And number one, airplane mode. A two-time dunk champ on his own, Zach Levine of the Bulls. What do you got, Vince? I mean, you said it. Two-time champ. I've watched, I've seen him dunk on uh, a few people live uh, playing in Atlanta. And, and, and not only now, he's not just a dunker anymore. And, and we talked about that. I was like, hey, show the world what you could do, but not, don't just be labeled as a dunker. And what he's doing this year, he could be in the running for most improved as well. I totally agree with that. And Brian, he was trying to win the three-point contest also, so he could have both, right? 
He could play. Hey, he could do that <laughs> yeah, as well. Zach Levine's he had an incredible. Uh, Vince Carter, Brian Windhorst, and as we mentioned, guys, Steph Curry passing Reggie second on the all-time three points list this past weekend. Steph throwing up the number 31 to pay homage to Reggie when he tied the record. Curry now trails only Ray Allen for the most threes made ever. Curry eclipsed Reggie's mark now in his 715th game, while Miller took almost 1,400 games to get there. But he did get to do something fun with Steph Curry on the media Zoom press conference after the game. Take a listen. Number one, congratulations. This is an unbelievable achievement. But the work is not done. Obviously, I know you're chasing Ray, but you are an inspiration to so many little ones. Uh, like mine, and I'm just so proud of all the work because I know what goes into that. I know the, the countless hours when it's easy to, you know, go hang with your boys, uh, <laughs> hit the club, sleep, do other things, but you're in the lab getting your work done. So the sacrifices, obviously, with your family, you're an unbelievable father and family man, and I know there's sacrifices that come with that. And the blended, uh, the blend that you have with your family and basketball and Dub Nation, um, the Millers are very proud of you, especially this little guy. Um, he is your number one fan. So thank you so much for what you have done, my friend. That means a lot, Reg. I appreciate it. Um, like you said, I know I have a lot more to take, but to uh, to try to live out all those. Um, yeah, that, that competitive juice, the the work that goes in, the appreciation of every game I get to play, and the, to uh, to shoot the ball at this level. Obviously, doing a lot of other things, but to to uh, to follow your footsteps in that regard, it means a lot. So I appreciate the support. You and Ray have been. If I'm chasing any record, to have two guys that have uh, reached back and encouraged me the way that y'all have, it means a lot. So I'll pass that torch on as well. But uh, I appreciate you, man, and thanks for all the all the support. Steph is right. Very classy move from Reggie Miller there. Now look at pacing here. At Curry's current pace of just over four made threes per game, he could surpass Allen's record toward the end of next season if he remains healthy. Whenever Curry does get there, virtually every record relating to three-point shooting will belong to Steph. Now, Vince, we've all kind of known around the league that's going to be the direction this is going, but you're the one who has faced Steph Curry, Reggie Miller, and Ray Allen, all in their primes. The whole thing was your prime, just saying. What stands out to you about each player <laughs> as you face them? Well, well, let's say this first of all. Steph will get there. I mean, it's, it's not a, it's when, you know, I mean, we know it's not sure. if. And, and he'll get there sooner than, uh, quicker than I think we, we think we, we think he will because of, you know, he's, he's going to have to take a little more shots, a few more shots this year, maybe not next year. So I, I think in early, so mid-season next year, he'll hmm. get there. But... You know, they're, they're three different guys. They're all great shooters, but you, you know, let's, let's talk about, I want to talk about, well, let's, let's talk about Steph first. He's a guy, you know, can shoot from anywhere in the arena with unbelievable ball skills. Not not the greatest athlete, he's not super. I mean, I, I always ask him, I said, when are you going to dunk one? Impress me with that. You know, you wowed us with your three-point shooting, go dunk one. And then you talk about Reggie Miller. Reggie Miller was a guy who will run you off a thousand screens. <laughs> And then catch and shoot three. <laughs> and it was just, um, he was so tough to guard. He was so crafty. He was smart. And he just, he just knew how to play the game and, and, and piss you off at the same time. Then there's Ray. Ray is th that athletic three-point shooter. So he's an athlete. And, you know, you, we all, you, know you, you say close out the three-point shoot as well. You have to be careful when you run Ray Allen off the three-point line because he was the athlete that can and will dunk on you at the same time. So... Uh, but at the end of the game, they all had one thing in common. They were clutch three-point shooters. They all hit unbelievable clutch, timely threes uh, in in championship situations, in major games. You know, we we know what Reggie did at the Garden. We know what Ray did uh, in in Miami mm -hmm. uh, for Miami. So uh, against San Antonio, of course, Ooh. Steph has has done it countless years. So it's just those guys are are the the, uh, the echelon of three-point shooting and for Steph to, to be so close to eclipsing that. And you, you, you mentioned one thing I want to say. Hmm. Uh, what Steph got to, uh, past Reggie in what, half 
uh, the games played, but you know the game has changed. So that number is wowing to some people. It's not for me, obviously, for a lot of us because you the game is changing. Yeah. Now guys are shooting 11 to 15 threes a game as an individual, not a team, <laughs> an, indiv an individual now. So the game's different. Brian, what do you see as the biggest differences between the three yeah, guys? So, yeah, this is a... Yeah, this is a counting stat. So because the counting is a little different from era to era, you mm -hmm. know, say who ends up with the most. I don't know if that's the fairest way to judge the three of them. What I will tell you is this, is that all of them are have incredible work ethics. All of them have shown to be able to beat any defense that was thrown at them. And to me, that's the greatest compliment that you could have. And with all mm -hmm. the downsides of the Zoom press conferences and the loss of personal connection. This is one rare moment where it was kind of cool where Reggie Miller could come in and surprise and that probably wouldn't have been available in this venue right. in this without this time and to bring his son right. wearing a curry jersey. I thought that was really cool more than anything. Yeah, no, I absolutely love that. And we hey, do. Hey guys, I want to yeah, say one ahead, thing. Vince. I, I want to say one thing. The crazy thing about all of this and, and like 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 you said Brian, but as far as the way the game is played now, Steph is going to be up there, and there's going to be guys we may even see in the next five years or less, Ray and, and, and Reggie further down the list because of the three-point shooters. I mean, think about it. James Harden is probably 200 threes made behind him. Now, I think because James being in uh, Brooklyn, it's, he'll tail off as far as uh, attempts and, and makes, but you, the way the game is changed, you're going to see a lot of guys, if they stay healthy and have a long career like these guys are having, will creep up that line, uh, creep up that list. Yeah, well, I can tell you, by the way, Reggie Miller was one of the main people I worked with when I worked at TNT. And he would come, when we would go do games together, he would come out on the court sometimes if there was basketball around and just start shooting those, firing off those threes. And he is yeah. exactly... Uh, at this age, exactly as deadly as he was <laughs> 10 or 15 years earlier. And the thing I learned watching him, yep. watching Steph, and of course, especially watching Ray Allen, is that that kind of perfection, that kind of dazzling sort of fireworks that those guys can let off is only the result of boring repetition. So it's such an amazing thing that this mm -hmm. incredible, spectacular shot, one of the most exciting things that someone can do on a basketball court, those incredible moon shots that Steph hits, it's the result of something very boring. They work so hard repeating and repeating and repeating the same mechanics, and it's what makes them great. Really, really special to watch. Yep. All right, guys, coming up. We'll talk a little Washington Wizards. They lost by 20 in the return to the court after six straight postponements due to COVID protocols. Do you even expect the Wizards to play 72 games this season? They're supposed to, but the I got Eastern Conference champs. Brian got disconnected, so Vince, it's just you and me. The big three combining for 71 points. But remember, the Heat without Jimmy Butler and Tyler Hero and the teams play again tonight in Brooklyn. So what do you think, Vince? How much credit do the Nets get for this win I, I if without still... Jimmy? I still think it's a concern, man. I mean, you know, you don't have Jill, Jimmy uh, Butler, you don't have Tyler Hero, two of the, uh, two important uh, pieces to the Miami Heat, and you, it's a close one. So just imagine, you know, those four points. What Jimmy brings to the table, what Tyler Hero can do uh, in spurts. Uh, it's a concern. Uh, it's a win, but um, you know, when you're talking about giving a team confidence later on they look back at this and say hey we didn't even have two of our guys our main guys you give these guys something to think about you give them confidence later on so it is a concern uh particularly on the defensive end for the nets yeah and look bam gave them 41 they traded away jerry one to san antonio the wizards had their previous six games remember postponed because they didn't have enough eligible players due to the league's covid protocols They've only played a total of 12 games all season, which is, of course, last in the league. So, Brian, how realistic do you think it really is to assume the Blazers will play a 72-game schedule? So let's just talk some realities of the calendar. Mm -hmm. So the NBA has not announced the second half season schedule. So in theory, they could extend things and squeeze this in because you've got Memphis, who's also got a bunch of games backlogged, and hopefully not, but there could be some more teams. But the problem is, is that the NBA wants to finish its finals before the Olympics, which begin uh, July 23rd to 24th. Now. I don't know what's going to happen with the Olympics either, Rachel. I wish mm -hmm. I could tell you, but the NBA does not want to go head-to-head -head in the finals yep. with Simone Biles, okay? Or, um, you know, <laughs> Ledecky. Right. Um, uh, so, Kay Ledecky. So, um, I think it's unlikely that they get to play the full 72 games. What's the NBA going to do about that? 
uh, stand by and watch. You know, baseball didn't have an equal number of games. It's potentially a rotten situation. Nobody likes it, but that's the reality. I agree. I don't. I don't see. I don't see that happening. I don't uh, think they'll they'll make 72 games either. We saw uh, college football go through stuff like that. So I, I just I, I just think they'll try to get as many games as possible and figure it out. You, know, you look back now uh, when the schedule, the half of the schedule came out originally. It's ge it's genius and it kind of gives the NBA some wiggle room to figure out how they can get as many games as possible, move the schedule around. Uh, so I thought on uh, on that uh, yeah. aspect of it, aspect of it that was smart to do because you know you you you, you don't have a bubble, so things like this is going to happen. You like I said, you just hope it doesn't continue to to miss more games. They're already at six. As you start to get to double digits, that's going to be virtually impossible to make up 10, 10 games, so uh, it won't happen. And look, I've heard players, fans, a lot of people say, man, this isn't fair what's going on. The competitive balance is off. Yes, you are correct. This will be a season where not every team will get the same fair shot. That is something that everybody accepted right. when they decided to go forward and have a season outside the bubble, and they decided that it was worth it because of the money that they would make and the fact that this business would be sustained right. through to the fact that we finally, hopefully, get to come out on the other side of this tunnel. And they decided that they didn't want to go back to a bubble. So if you decide those two things, you are going to have unfair situations for some teams, and that is the Washington Wizards right now. And Vince, Scott Brooks said, I think all of our guys are going to have to get back into NBA rhythm, making the point that it's not just getting another game mm -hmm. in, that it's getting back into that rhythm. He said it's been totally taken away from us. What can you tell us about how difficult Absolutely. it is to regain your rhythm after a two-week layoff in the middle of the season? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like when you, when you miss one or two, let's say two or three games, and shoot, sometimes one or two games, you get off rhythm and you're just trying to, 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 to catch your breath and you just feel, you feel like sometimes you've missed a month of basketball. So imagine missing six games in a row. Yeah, practice, you can simulate the NBA, uh, NBA game all you want. But this, this the, the competition, the level of play that you have to play at, at every time. Because in practice, you can play a quarter and then you're gonna stop. You're going to stop to, 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 to make a point in practice, but you can't simulate an NBA game. You can't simulate playing against uh, a LeBron James, a Kevin Durant, Harden, so on and so forth. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's just going to take time. And, you know, I hope, it, you know, Wizards fans and out there didn't expect them to come back, hitting the ground, running, talking about, oh, they have all this rest. Yes, right. they did. They had a lot of rest, <laughs> but... At the same time, the rhythm also comes with that, and you can't get that back. You just have to continue to play games, so hopefully they can play games to get back uh, where they want to be. And look, we see this with individual players, right? A guy misses a couple weeks because of an injury. It takes him a minute to get his rhythm back, but now it's the whole yeah. team. So yes. obviously that is a whole different Yeah, you situation. can run all you want. You can ride, yeah, you can run all you want, ride the bike all you want, get on the treadmill, do all of that. It's nothing that can get you back into game shape but playing. Absolutely. All right. I want to switch gears because did anyone notice a trend happening this weekend? The big man is back. Well, at least according to our friend Kendrick Perkins. <laughs> Perk's having fun tweeting right now. Big Ben still exists. Gosh dang it. Embiid, 33 and 14 <laughs> boards. Cousins, 28 and 17 boards. Bam, 41 and 9 times. AD, 37 and 28 minutes. Jokic, 29 points, 22 boards six times and it wouldn't be a perk tweet without carry on vince you witnessed the evolution from bully ball <laughs> to small ball in the latter part of hey. your career but what do you think do you agree with perk about the resurgence of the big man right now hey we also have to we can't forget about clint capella mm -hmm. who had the triple double with 10 blocks uh, as well i mean the, I, I, he, he, that's a fair tweet and he's right. The bigs right now are playing <laughs> unbelievable basketball, whether it's bully ball, defense, triple doubles, passes. I mean, you can, you're play, they're playing through uh, Jokic. Uh, they're, they're telling, I mean, 10 blocks in a game. You don't, you don't see that often. You're seeing 20, 25 rebounds. You're seeing bigs, like you say, Adebayo, putting up 40 points, shooting threes. I mean, the big is back. The big is back, and they've adapted to the new style of play. So kudos to the, to the big man. Yeah, if we took an MVP straw poll right now, 
uh, two of the guys would be on the t near the top of the list would be Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. We're talking about classic, true five-men players. And the last time a, a, a full-on uh, center won MVP was Shaq back in 2000. Uh, Duncan and Dirk won mm -hmm. it, but they were, you know, played power forward, uh, Duncan especially. So the fact that even the centers are in the MVP discussion, and I'm not saying they would win it. You know, LeBron is building a beautiful case with the Lakers. LeBron yet again. Uh, but the fact that that's happening is showing you that the teams are figuring out how to use their talented big men and their three-point shooters, how to use them together. It's a process, to, to use something that Joel Embiid would like to say, and that process is leading to Embiid to putting up. He had a big-time weekend, too, in two wins over the Celtics, so um, he's, he's right up there as well. Well, during this show, the NBA just announced its Eastern and Western Conference Players of the Week, Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic. So there you go. All right, guys, coming up. <laughs> There Gordon you go. Hayward <laughs> dropping 39, hit the go-ahead bucket to beat the Magic last night. Is the Hornets' big gamble from this past offseason, that $120 million gamble, starting to pay off? We will discuss. Stick with us. Again, honoring Vanessa Bryant's wishes and celebrating Kobe's life. It is crunch time here on The Jump. Giannis called for a free throw violation for taking too long to shoot this weekend. He's shooting a career-worst 59% from the line this season. Now, Vince, the free throw violation was, you remember a couple years ago, they sped up the amount of time you had at the line. But overall, how right. big of a deal are his struggles at the free throw line? I think it's a big deal. And I think that 10 seconds come from overthinking the situation in the process. So as a free throw shooter, you know, Giannis, he's proven he wants to be the best in the game. So he's, t he's trying to put it all together. And I think, I think, he, you can tell sometimes at the free throw line, he's thinking about every process, every situation before he gets to actually shooting it instead of just shooting it, trusting the process that he's gone through in practice. Well, after the game, he said the guys on the, on the, in the lanes were counting down to put pressure on the refs. Six, seven, that was eight. Rondo. Means, <laughs> that got into his head maybe a little bit. And you, yeah, Rondo, totally. And you think, that uh, that's gonna, gonna stop, no, it's gonna keep going. And look, there have been times in his career where he's had 15 game stretches like this where he hasn't shot that well. I'm not worried about this 15 game stretch, but if you go back and look over the four years, last four yeah, years, that graphic uh, four years shows. ago, he was a 77% free throw percentage shooter. And that fall off is worrisome. That graph is, is really well, interesting. Well, go ahead, Vince. Yeah, well, well, I think, you know, and as I think, you just think every year that it started, to go down, I think he's thinking about, okay, I just need to be perfect. I need to get it right. So now every year he's thinking about the year before, uh, where, where did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong? And I, I just think he's overthinking it. And sometimes he looks mechanical, guys, because if you look at his free throw on, on some of the, on, on those, uh, the, the video, his head falls back so much. So that's why he's short or goes right sometimes because when his head falls back, goes back, those shoulders goes, fall back and he shoots it short a lot. And I think he's thinking about it. It's like once he gets up to, to this point, he's thinking, where do I need where do I need to get the ball up, not out, or get the ball up, not out. The, all of these different things I think is playing in his mind when he's shooting. And that's that's if he gets that out of his mind, you'll see his, his free throw percentage take off again. The mind messes with the mechanics, but then the worse the mechanics get, Absolutely. the worse it messes with your mind. So this is a problem. We've seen other players go through this. Some are able to dig themselves out of it. Some, frankly, never get it back. So we will have to see what goes on with Giannis. And you can see it affecting his shot in other ways when he's not on the free throw line. And again, we have seen that with player after player over time as well. So we will keep watching it. I want to switch over, guys, to the Miami Heat. They are going to use coronavirus sniffing dogs. You heard me say that right. I'll just say it again. Coronavirus sniffing dogs at their arena to so screen call it a fans dog? who want to attend their games. They've been working on this plan for months. Highly trained dogs have been in place for some games already this season in which the team